Astronomers have discovered seven Earth-sized planets orbiting a tiny nearby star. To determine that there are actually seven Earth-sized planets orbiting the nearby Trappist-1 star about 40 light years away. NASA announced the discovery of seven Earth-sized planets around a star about 40 light years away from Earth. That translates to 235 trillion miles. All seven could have water, which means the key to life is like ours there. This right. thing has got seven planets and its own sun. But I believe that instead of having dirt on it like our planet does and water, I think this thing is just a big, uh, bright, reddish-orange iron ball because it's giving off all this red iron oxide dust out into the atmosphere. There appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold a great red dragon having seven heads, great red dragon having seven heads, great red dragon having seven heads and seven crowns upon his heads. He it is who created for you all that is on earth, moreover, and established the heaven, and fashioned the seven heavens or space, the seven heavens or space, the seven heavens or space. And we know in the hieroglyphics the ancients even knew about Nibiru and the seven planets, seven, seven planets, planets. Most people aren't aware of it, but there was a scientific storm in America all through the late 50s about this thing out there in space because the astronomers were all watching it, and that was back when they weren't afraid to talk about it. And hell, it was on the front cover of the magazine one day in like 1961. So we have NASA, science, mainstream media, the Quran, the Bible, ancient Samaria, all knew about this way before any of us was born. And I'm pretty sure that if you think back just a little bit, whether it was TV, a news article, a school, you heard about these seven planets. You heard about Planet X. You heard about Nibiru a long time ago. Uh, whether you remember this or you don't remember it so why all the hush about it now why are they chemtrailing the airs these are questions that one should ask themselves why are they spending billions of dollars maybe even trillions to block this from the view of the people why and then watch why if they know that it's out there and it can sustain life. Why aren't they sending anything out to it? Let's see. In early 2016, astronomers using the small robotic TRAPPIST telescope found the first planets orbiting the star. With follow-up observations, a total of seven worlds have now been identified in the system. Astronomers discovered and learned about the planets orbiting TRAPPIST-1 by studying tiny, regular dips in the star's brightness. All seven could have water, which means the key to life is like ours there. Three of the planets fall in the habitable zone. That's where liquid water on the surface is most likely. CBS News science and futurist contributor, that's Michio Kaku, is a physics professor at the City University of New York. Welcome. We haven't seen you in a long time, but this, you're only here when it's something big, and this is big. This is big. I heard it described as this, Michio. It's like finding a, a pot of gold next to the Holy Grail. Is it that big? It's big. This is, <laughs> NASA has hit the jackpot this time. Uh -huh. Okay, the Holy Grail is to find an Earth-like twin in outer space. 
We have now taken a giant step toward that to find another planet in outer space, perhaps with oxygen, perhaps with liquid oceans, perhaps with radio transmissions, perhaps some life form. Not just one. That's right. Well, we have say, seven yeah. possible yeah. candidates. Yeah. This is unprecedented. Astronomers are just jumping up and down right now. First off, we know that they are lying when they said that they spotted these planets in 2016. We know, I mean, you can go back to the newspaper articles and everything, they've been spotted these. They've been talking about seven planets that they found in the news a while ago. You know, th they just didn't find this last year. You know, it's bullshit. And then all of a sudden, why do they want to talk about it now? And then all of a sudden, NASA's is supposed to be making some announcement in a couple of days, you know some big huge announcement about something else they found out there you know why now you know uh after you spent trillions of dollars you know trying to hide this from the people you know and we'll get into why they hiding it if god wills later but uh okay so you found these planets and they can sustain life they said three of these planets can sustain life you know uh how come we haven't heard any hot pursuit over the, uh, over getting to these planets, you know, to see if they have life forms on them and they can sustain life, like uh, we're hearing the uh, Oriental gentleman saying, you know, he's saying basically, and he's supposed to be top leading professor and scientist and all of this, one of the. Uh, uh, biggest brains of uh, of today's times, you know. And why didn't anybody ask the question? Why aren't we on these planets? You know. Okay. Then one would have to ask, why in the hell did they turn away from these planets and go to Saturn? See, they went to Saturn in what, 1997, something like that. 1997 20 years ago you know you sent out something to go to Saturn why because you was running away from these planets and you were looking for a place to damn high there is no logical explanation of why you wouldn't send a probe or the Cassini project to these plants these seven new plants to find out about them you don't want to find out anything about them because you know it's God's kingdom come that's what they know they know it's God's kingdom come why the hush us? Because if people found out about them, they would turn to God. They would. You know, they would be looking for some answers. You know, they'd be questioning the government. They would stop working. The society would fail, huh? So they won't tell you. They'll, they'll watch you get destroyed. There's people like me that'll tell you, you know. And let society be whatever it's going to be. And let people do whatever they're going to do. You know, are people going to panic out? Are people going to quit their job? If people are going to commit suicide, let them do what they're going to do any damn way. It ain't like the truth ain't coming. It ain't like these, this thing ain't going to be up our ass in a minute. It is. And it's going to be far worse than anybody can imagine. So we had this whistleblower that, that, that you know, people have been in denial about. But he been 1,000% right. So we're going to go ahead and keep listening to what he has to say about, you know, what's coming and why NASA went the other way with the Cassini project. When we thought at first it was just a teeny little red speck of, of fuzzy red dust in the distance, but over the years as it went by and we watched it, it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then finally about 08, we could see this thing like it was across the street. And we could see that it was a blazing hot ball of fire giving out sparkles of red iron oxide dust for thousands of miles in every direction. And you could see the planets circulating it. Now, I'll tell you one thing that I really am nervous about. I think this thing's got a planet like ours circling it. This is its own solar system. We're about to have a solar system come through the middle of our solar system. This can't be good. But unfortunately, it looks as though that's what's going to happen. Hopefully, nothing in this mess will hit us even though it does say it will in the Bible, leastwise it does in my Bible, it says we can expect all kinds of problems. 
we were looking at asteroids right close to this thing. There's asteroids that are floating around right near the, uh, that are orbiting the, uh, the main sun itself. These things appear to be about 500 miles across. And, and as you go back into the tail, you get into meteorites that go back for millions of miles in the tail. This thing looks like a giant red teardrop shaped dust cloud and you can see once if you if you're able to see it up close like we did you can see every speck out there I guarantee you there's trillions of meteorites following this thing now these CIA people that I know say that we're not going to uh, uh, be that close to it when it goes past us they're saying that in order to attain breakaway speed when it comes up around the back side of the sun its speed will at least double possibly more which will put it here earlier than everybody is saying it will and uh, that this thing will probably be about 20 mile 20 million miles from us when when it crosses in front of us and then as soon as it flips us upside down we're going to go into its debris field tail and be pelted with uh, meteorites and of course in the bible it says they will a talon 70 pounds so if you've got 70 pound meteorites falling like hail and i can guarantee you they will be falling like hail because there's that many in the tail of this thing this thing has got a tail loaded with trash i mean uh it's incredible the amount of stuff that's in this thing's tail. And uh, we're going to go right through that tail. And if it doesn't beat everything on the surface of the ground into a flat putty, I don't know what it will take. I tell everybody, you better be at least 20, 30, 40, 50 feet on the ground and have either concrete or stone above you because it will break through the roof or whatever you've got if you don't. Yeah, the uh, underground bases are huge. Some of them have little studios. It ain't nothing. They're big bases, man. Um, shaped like uh, upside down Christmas trees uh, for uh, stability, like uh, structural strength of the of the whole thing, so that you don't have to support the weight of the upper floors um, as much. It's a pretty ingenious design, actually, if you're going to build an underground base like that. I don't know the exact locations of them, though. They're military bases, like uh, supposedly this Pine Gap in Australia, someplace called Montuk, but these are the advertised places. There's a lot of unadvertised places, like there's supposedly a underground military base for every state, sometimes two. The underground bases have connecting tunnels underneath of them, and they go way down deeper. And here we go again. One would have to ask themselves the question is, why? Why would your governments around the world be spending trillions of dollars again to dig all these big ass uh, deep underground military bases? Why? Is it because they're going to start a war and kill everybody and they need to emerge again, you know, with a civilization? What would be the reason of that? Why kill everybody and then re-emerge? You know, wouldn't people follow the same be uh, pattern again? Wouldn't people uh, rebel again? They know that. You know, uh, they can't. I mean, you might as well just build robots if you want somebody to obey you that badly. It's not about obedience. Uh, it's about hiding from what's coming. You know, wh look how thick these uh, bunkers are. Now, when you look at the thickness of these bunkers. And you look at, you know, how deep they going down. Just like the Egyptians and everybody else that got destroyed. Uh, basically, they trying to build something so strong like, like the uh, pyramids. That can withstand whatever the blow that's coming from outer space. Because just like I said, each civilization knew that this was coming. And each time it came, it destroyed the civilization. Where are they now? You know, where's Atlantis? You know, where are the Mayans? You know, where are the ancient Egyptians? You know, where, where are the Sumerians and all these ancient civilizations that were so powerful? Gone. Destroyed, right? And so, um, <coughs> whether it was HUD, whether it was Noah, whether it was um, Lot, you know, destroyed, destroyed, destroyed. And so now we're looking at destruction 
and it's right on top of us. It, it's like any day now, you know. And I, I see these people living their lives and stuff like that, while your government is going down hiding. And nine times out of ten, they probably um, shooting footage from someplace else, or they already shot footage. Who knows of themselves? Uh, here's where the president is now. He hiding underground. You know, I guarantee you, they hiding underground. Because they know what's going to happen. Anyway, let's get back to the whistleblower. This pull shift will probably happen from start to finish in around 28 minutes. That doesn't give you a lot of warning. When you see that thing out there in the sky, you're going to have to run as fast as you can to your underground facility because this is going to happen so fast. Listen, I was told that this thing's magnetic field is going to be so strong, anybody that does not have a padded lead helmet to wear will have their brain gutted for everything they ever knew, and they'll be a complete raving moron after this thing passes. See, as it comes up underneath of us, it's going to start and pull us toward it. And then, just like a pair of big magnets, all of a sudden it's going to lock onto us. And when it does, it's going to be like the jolly green giant kick the earth in the ass. It's going to send a jolt. 500 to a thousand foot high this is what I'm told 500 to a thousand foot high shock waves all the way around planet Earth they'll be so bad that in a lot of areas that don't have good solid soil it'll fluff it so badly that you'll practically be like you're standing in quicksand but the poles are not shifting at 42 miles a year they're shifting at 42 miles a day and the reason is is because this planet is rolling over to face this thing. Now, when it goes by, it's not going to push our North Pole away. It's going to grab our Southern Pole with its Northern Pole, and it's going to be like somebody kicked this planet in the ass. That earthquake that it talks about in uh, Revelations, uh, when the opening of the sixth seal comes, from what I've been told, that's very accurate because that's exactly what's going to happen. There's going to be a massive earthquake when it locks onto us. As it goes past us, we're going to follow it right upside down. The oceans are just going to be roaring from pole to pole, as you could well guess they would, because if you take a planet that's 7,000 miles across and roll it upside down in 30 minutes, you're going to have some real serious problems with wind and water. We should be preparing to expect this thing to show up. You know, you get these clowns and they have no idea what's going to happen to them. And they ask me dumb questions like, hey, rap, you know, why, if uh, the world is ending, why do you ask for donations and things like that? And why do you have a bomb shelter? And I say, first of all, we still alive and no man knows the hour you know nobody knows when God's gonna come exactly but we see all the signs of the end secondly ask Noah and ask Lot ask Noah why he built an ark and ask Lot why he ran to the cave then you know why Raptor News built a, a bomb shelter you know and shouldn't be questioned but you know people question everything except for what they should question you know why aren't you questioning NASA why aren't you questioning the government why aren't you asking your government why don't they have bomb shelters like every other country have you know except for they selfish self you know uh, the bomb shelters uh, every other government have for the people supposedly some you know a lot of governments do why this big huge country you know, it's supposed to be one of the greatest countries. You, you don't have no shelter for your people. How great can this country be then? Uh, you know, <coughs> and people don't understand this. They don't understand that this is the most dangerous time right now. Because, just like I said, when that electromagnetic field of that planet hit our electromagnetic field of this planet, it's going to shake us to hell. Literally. And basically, if you're driving, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 miles an hour, like a lot of people do, and you carefree, when that jolt happens, you're going to fly to the moon. The road going to eat you up. And you know what happens when you're turning so fast after a big jolt, and you're doing 80 down the freeway or something like that, 
and that big jolt happens, you know what's going to happen? You're going to fly out of that vehicle. You know, and and a lot of people, you know, you you're not listening. You're not you're not really hearing what the man actually had to say. You know, and I, I heard this man a long, long time ago, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you have listened to my older broadcast with this guy on here. You know, uh, when if you if you look at electromagnetic currents, it affects the brain, and it will turn you dumb. So they have something called the clicker or something like that, some kind of electric magnetic uh, thing that, oh, and it's called the wand. Look it up. And you, and you put it on, on on your brain or something like that, and they click these things, and it'll make you go stupid real quick, you know. So that's what this thing is gonna do. Okay, let's say you 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 blink out for five seconds as this thing is passing or longer, and you doing 80 miles an hour on the freeway, you're in an airplane and things like that. And then you start getting the big picture. You operating heavy equipment. You're, you're, you're going down the side of a hill because you're mountain climbing. You know, people don't realize the danger. And basically, it is not the time to do any of that stuff. It, it's not really the time to drive. We know people still got to live and everything else. But you better be very cautious as hell right now. You know, and, and, and <laughs> a recap, you know, uh, I said I was going to tell you because people are going to hell you know and I said in the video why are they hiding why why didn't they tell you why did they start to tell you and then they stopped telling you because the governments as the Bible says is working with the demons they are what do you think y'all getting your technology and all your advancement from demons you know these ancient ass demons that's what you're getting them from and, and everyone knows that and then you try to act like you high IQ people and all this kind of crap you know like you so advanced and you ain't shit you know demons and all of this stuff is coming to an end right now because God's system is here and we're just going to get into a little bit of scripture and then we're going to end out Mark 9 1 and he said unto them verily I say unto you that there be some of them that stand here but shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. And so when we're saying the kingdom of God coming with power. Uh, Matthew 6.10 Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So a lot of people say this prayer every day. Thy kingdom is coming. But now we have a new prayer. Thy kingdom is here. Thy will is done or finished. Or our ass is done you know and then we go to Revelation uh, 6 15 then the kings of the earth the princes the generals the rich the mighty and everyone else both slave and free hid in caves and among the rocks of the mountains we go to Isaiah 2 10 enter the rocks and hide in the dust from the terror of the Lord and from the splendor of his majesty he telling them go hide Isaiah 2 19 Men will go into caves of the rocks and into holes of the ground before the terror of the Lord and the splendor of his majesty when he arises to make the earth tremble. So that man just said this earth is going to tremble because of that magnetic pull when these plants is coming. The ancient Sumerians and all these ancient cultures and civilizations have this Nibiru planet with wings on it spread out. That means that it has gotten very close. And then they have a writer, and that writer in it is God. You know. And this depiction has been depicted from Egypt to the Mayans to the Sumerians and all these ancient civilizations knew. You know, people, this is uh, my ministry online to you. And I'm giving you my all. And I am. I'm pouring a lot into this. And, you know, this is my service to my Lord. You know, and so uh, this is my doing of good. This is my spreading the word. This is my spreading the gospel. This is the truth, as far as I know. I'm not a person that's going to add any lies to make things seem all great and grand. No, I'm a person that can connect things very well, you know, and put things together very well by the mercy and grace of God, Most High. 
you know and I'm pouring everything I have into this you know for your benefit me and my family know like I, I say before you know we know these things and I'm giving it to you you know and all of it is free of charge and you know I have my difficulties too you know and so we're selling t-shirts if anybody wants to buy any of our t-shirts we have uh, these new t-shirts and you know you should wear them they, they kind of sporty you know uh, you know they, they're cool and we also accept charity and you know God is coming back to destroy the proud I'm not proud I can accept charity you know I go to the food bank I'm not proud I lived in the ghetto I was on section 8 I was on the county you know and being off of the county and being off the section 8 is very difficult you know it is especially when you, you kind of like been raised up on that you know and we fought to get off of that and not to say that uh, I don't know I don't think we have enough time to ever go back to anything I don't think I would ever want to go back to it but um if, if the push come to shove you know what I mean you're just never too proud and we need to give up pride sometimes you know you just gotta ask you know so if anybody's willing to give charity if anybody's willing to buy any of our t-shirts or supplies or anything else that we have uh, go check out the website and stuff like that find a design that you like and and basically you can make cups and uh, all different types of items on this website you know and and help support what I'm doing here Raptor News <laughs>